Hello and welcome to this video series on using Kony Visualizer. I'm Billy Hollis and I'll be your guide through the series. It will cover building a responsive and progressive web app using Kony Visualizer. The app will allow the user to browse a list of appliances and see detail for each appliance. The first video will create basic functionality. The second will add additional aesthetics and responsive layout. The final video will make the application into a progressive web app. Here is the first page of the app when it's finished. Naturally, as we are building the app, it won't look this nice from the beginning. We will build the functionality first, including the ability to select a category of appliance, such as refrigerator, and then see the appliances in the category. Later episodes will continue to build on this basic app. Here are the overall steps we will take for this episode. We'll attach to a data service to get data for the appliances. That data service has already been created for us. Then we will create the pages for the application and integrate the data for those pages. During this construction, we will build in responsive layout and add some app functionality in JavaScript. At this point, I've started Visualizer and selected a workspace to store my application. A workspace is basically a folder to hold a related collection of apps. Note that there are several tutorials available that go into more depth on certain aspects of Visualizer. This video series is an end-to-end -end construction of a web app, so it touches on many of these areas. The first step from here is to select New Project. Visualizer has several sample apps that you can use as examples for your own development, but for this walkthrough, we'll build an app from scratch. We need to give our application a name, in this case, Appliance App. For a complex application, the Kony Reference Architecture is available. It adds capabilities such as support for the MVC or Model View Controller pattern. However, our app will be simple and we'll do freeform JavaScript. This is the Visualizer Development Environment. As you can see, Visualizer supports development of apps for all kinds of form factors, including mobile and tablet apps on iOS and Android. However, new in this version of Visualizer is extensive support for responsive web apps, including support for progressive web apps, commonly referred to as PWAs. In this episode, we will be building a responsive web app. In the final episode in the series, we'll add PWA functionality. Our application will allow a user to browse a list of appliances, filter by category of appliance, and view details for an appliance. First, we will need our application to have access to the data for appliances. This part of the application has already been built, so we just need to bind the data services to our application. Data services are available through the Kony Fabric backend, which is available with this option on the left. If you have not previously logged in, you'll be prompted for credentials to your Kony Fabric account at this point. We are using an existing backend app. The Fabric account we're using has many applications in it. The data services we need are in the Appliances beta, so I search for it and then press the button to associate that backend with our project. Kony Fabric offers several options for dealing with data. For now, we are going to use objects. These are object models that we will use in our application. There's only one service available in Appliances Beta, and it is for appliances. Note the objects of appliance and category that are available. These are object models that we will use in our application. Now let's go back to the main Visualizer environment, which is done by pressing the Visualizer logo at the top left. On the right, you'll see the area where we can work with properties and data. The Properties tab lets us work with widgets that we will put in our app shortly. The Data tab lets us see the available data services. That includes some sample services you can use for your own exploration. In our case, the Project services have the back end that we loaded earlier. Under Objects, you'll see that there is Appliances Service Beta 1 with the Appliance and Category Object Models. 
We'll get back to them shortly after we have built a page for our responsive web app that needs that data. Let's create our first form, which will become a page in our responsive web app. If we go to Forms, we see a drop-down for New Form. We need to give it a meaningful name, so we'll call it Form Appliance Browse. The first thing we'll put on the form is a list of appliances, and that comes from the Appliance Objects Get operation. I just drag it onto the form, and a widget is created to hold the list. We'll need to do some work on it, though, because it holds a lot more data fields than we need. This widget is called a segment, and its purpose is to hold a list of data items with appropriate formatting for each item. We can change the formatting in the first item to affect all the items. But first, let's change the name to something easy to recognize later. I'll call it Seg Appliances. Now let's delete all the data fields we don't need and hide some data that we don't want to show the user. You can delete a widget by clicking on it and then right-clicking and selecting Delete. You can also select it and click the Delete key. To save time, I'll delete the other widgets that we don't need. And we're back with the widgets we don't need deleted. And now we need to rename the remaining widgets to easily use them in a small amount of JavaScript we'll need to write later and to easily identify them when we work on skins later. To rename, select the Rename option from the drop-down and paste in or type in a new name. I'll rename the rest while the video is paused to save time. Now we're back with the names changed and next I'll hide the ones that we don't need to be visible. You can hide a widget by highlighting it and then going to its Properties tab, the Look sub-tab there has a visible property that I can set to off. Let's do that for two more. Our next step is to make the segment display items in columns. That means that each item needs to flow across the segment horizontally. So we go to the Segments property settings. I'll highlight Segment right there and then go to the Segment sub-tab, which has properties specific to the segment widget. And one of those properties is Layout Type, which I will change from Flow Vertical to Flow Horizontal. Don't worry, my widgets haven't disappeared. They're just further out to the side. I'll change their Layout Properties to something more suitable to a horizontal arrangement. I'll give each label in the segment a percentage of the total width, with some separation between the labels. The width is on the Look tab. It was originally set rather large because of the vertical arrangement, but I'll change it to 25%. To save time, I'll do it for the other two labels while the recording is paused. Now we're back with our proportional sizing in place. And the next thing we need to fix is that the segment takes up the entire form but we will need some room at the top for some widgets that allow the user to select a category. So we'll need to change properties to make that room. It's common, even in responsive layout, to set vertical positions with units instead of percentages. So I will set the top of the segment at 200, and I will pull it in a little bit on the size by setting the left and right to 15. The list needs headers for the columns, and to get the headers to have the same responsive layout as the columns, the best widget type is Flex Container. I'm going to drag that right there, and I'll need to set some appropriate properties to get it to position right at the top of the segment. And these properties will then make it line up very nicely, as you can see, with the list of appliances. We need labels for the column headers, and they need layout properties for horizontal positioning, the same as the labels in the segment. That way, the column headers will line up with the columns and resize the same way as the columns. We'll put one label in, and we'll fix it up with all the properties that it needs, and then we'll duplicate it twice to get the other two labels that are needed for column headers. That way we don't have to set the position and layout properties for all three. I'll set the left to 15 to line up with the segment beneath it. I'll set the top to 0 
because this label needs to be at the top of the flex container that it's in. I'll set the height to 100% so that it's 100% of the height of the flex container. And I'll set the width to 25%. That way we'll get that nice proportional sizing the same way we did in the segment. Just a couple more settings to go. I need to set center Y to 50% so that it will center itself vertically. And I need to change the size of the font because right now it's pretty big. Let's bring that back to 120%. Now I'm ready to duplicate the labels, but I have one step I need to take first. That flex container needs to flow horizontally. So let's set the layout type to flow horizontal. And then we can go and duplicate the labels. There's one, and there's another one. The column headers need descriptive text, of course. So let's change the text property of each one. It's right there. The first one is brand. The second one is model number. We could just put a symbol in there for that. And the last one is price. The widgets we've added need some good names, so let me enter those while the video is paused. With our widget names in place, we're ready to run our app and see the list of appliances. The product menu contains a build option, and you can see I previously checked the right build option from a test run I did earlier. Click the build button, and now the app will build. It will take a while to build, so I will suspend the video while that happens and come back when the build is finished. And we're back with a finished build. Let me bring the browser onto the screen that has the application as it runs right now. You can see we have our list of appliances. And if we change the width of our window, notice that things resize in a proportionate fashion. That means that our responsive layout is working. Now we're ready to add a drop-down list box to the top area of the form so that the user can select a category and see the appliances in that category. Let's drag that list box on, and let's name it LST Category. Let's set the appropriate properties for that list box. I'll set the left to 15 as I have several other widgets. The top will be just about right with an 84, and the height needs to be 60. The list box has some placeholder data by default, and we need to remove that. So go to the list box tab. There you see master data edit, and we can just delete all of the records that are in there. If you wanted hard-coded things in a list box, that's where you'd put them. Now we need to put categories in the drop-down when the form starts up. So let's go to the Forms Action tab, and you see here the pre-show event. Let's edit that. We will get the data with an asynchronous call in that pre-show event. We need to scroll down to Invoke Object Service right here, and we need to select the service that will get us the call. In this case, we're looking for categories, so we want category get. Now we have the data, but we have to map in the appropriate fields for the drop-down to work. The drop-down needs an ID field and a description field, which in this case will be the name of the category. This will require a small code snippet. In the callback, let's select add snippet right here. And the snippet we're going to drop in looks like this. Notice this category list variable right here. We put the records that were returned into it, and then we pass that into the list box's master data map. And we say that the ID for the list box will be the category ID, and the description will be category description. We also have one small line right here. That line causes the list box to reset when the page is refreshed. At this point, the drop-down list box will have categories in it. And now we need to handle a user selection of a category and filter the list to the appliances in that category. That is done on the Action tab for the list box. If you see the On Selection event right there, that's the one that we're going to edit. When the user selects a category, 
A small JavaScript code snippet will set up the filter needed for fetching the appliances in that category. So go to Add Snippet right here. And the snippet we need to drop in looks like this. The snippet starts by getting the selected key in the list box. If the key is the special item, select Category, then that means the filter should be empty and all appliances should be returned. But if the key is a Category ID, then a filter is constructed to fetch selected appliances in that category. Now we'll need to invoke the service to fetch appliances. It's the same one we used earlier to fill up the segment, and it's right here. As before, we select the service, Appliance, and we want the Get operation. But now we need to set the filter. The filter was created in that earlier code snippet, so we just need to pass it into the filter field of the OData call, like that. Since we're changing the data in the list of appliances, we need to reset all the mappings when the new data is returned, and that requires a code snippet. The easiest way to get the code for that snippet is to use the same code that was generated when the original list was loaded. That's in the Forms on Mapping event. If you press Generate Code, you'll get this. And the code we need starts at the top of this area and goes down to here, where we set the data. So I'll copy that and then use it back where we were working before. So let's go back to the list box and go to that on selection event. And we need to add the snippet to the callback right here. So let's go to insert snippet, add snippet right there. And the snippet goes right in here. At this point, we have the functionality to select a category and see appliances in that category. We need to do a build and test. And Rather than going to the Build menu, we can just access this capability, which we'll build using the last configuration that we used. So I will start the build, and as before, I will pause the video while the build is going on. Okay, our build is done. So let's go get the browser window that holds our application. And notice that we can select a category, such as refrigerator, and we will see the appliances in that category. We also have the ability to go back to select category and it will show all of the appliances. Now let's create a form to see the details on an appliance. That form will be shown when a user has selected an appliance in the dropdown. Go to Forms and select New Form. And we're going to rename it to Form Appliance Detail. Next, we need some widgets on the form to show information about the appliance. I'll keep to a minimal layout in the interest of time, and this could easily be enhanced with more information. Since we've seen how widgets are put in a form and configured with property settings, this time I'll do them while the video is paused to save time, and then we'll look at the details of what I have done. Before I do that, let me show you the layout I'm going to implement. Several details about the appliance will be in labels, and a photo of the appliance will be shown in an image widget. Several flex containers are used for grouping and responsive layout. The brand and model are grouped in one flex container. The rest of the details are in two nested flex containers. The inner flex container holds the photo and description side by side, and then an outer flex container stacks the price below them. Here is the completed form. To use it, we'll need to go to the point where the user selects an appliance. So, highlight SEG Appliances and edit the action for On Row Click right here. We'll need a local variable to hold the ID of the selected appliance. So let's go right here and click Add Local Variable. I'll name it Selected ID. It's an expression that gets the selected ID from the list of appliances. Next, we need to call an object service to get the details for that selected appliance. Highlight the top node and select Invoke Object Service right here. Select Appliances and the Get operation. 
and then go down and put a filter in place that uses the selected ID that I fetched earlier. When that data for the appliance comes back, we need to map it to the appropriate widgets in the detail form, and we'll use the new mapper for that. First, highlight the callback, because the next action takes place after the callback is finished getting data. Then select the Navigate to Form action, right here, and choose Form Appliance Detail in the list of forms just below. Notice the link on the side to open the Mapping Editor. The Mapping Editor will allow us to associate data fields in the appliance data record with widget properties on our detail form. The hierarchy in the mapper can get pretty big, so let's open up some more room for it so we'll be able to see the entire hierarchy. That ought to do. On the left side, we want to open up the services node. And there is the appliance service that we called, including a collection of records that have these data fields. On the right side, that's where our UI elements reside, and so under Forms, we see Form Appliance Detail with the various widgets that are on the form. I'm going to be mapping data from the service into properties of these widgets, so it's convenient for me to just open up all the widgets so that I can get to the properties very easily. And let's get to the bottom here so that we see all of the data fields. Mapping is just a matter of selecting the data field on the left and then selecting the property that it goes into on the right. So the photo URL, for example, goes to the source property of the image widget, and you see the mapping shows up as a curve. The rest of the mappings are pretty obvious. We've got the label for brand, so we select brand and put it in the text. We've got the label for model number, so we select model number, put it in the text. We've got the label for description, so let's go get description right here and put it in there. And we've got the label for price, and there's a string variable that returns the price in a string formatted form, so we're going to put that in there. Let's test the navigation to the detail form. I'll select build last, and as usual, I'll pause the video until the build completes. Okay, our build has finished. Let's go get the finished app in a web page, and we see that we have same functionality we had before. We can select individual items. If we pick one, we can go now and see details on that item, and including some resizing as we change the width of the page. Our resizing here, of course, still works. We still have smaller and larger amounts taken by the columns in the appliance segment. The responsive design in the app right now is very basic, and so are the cosmetics. In the next episode, we will enhance the app in several ways. We'll add search capability, we'll cover advanced capabilities for responsive layout, and we'll work on making the cosmetics better with theming and skins. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how a basic responsive web app can be built quickly in Kony Visualizer. Besides the two additional episodes in this video series, you can get access to all kinds of resources at Kony Basecamp. Just visit the URL on your screen.